I'm Blake Hargreaves. Welcome to Future Stops. I just noticed it in the pipe shop. You're hearing the sounds of the Org Les Tourneaux workshop, a pipe organ factory housed in a former water treatment plant in sleepy St. Hyacinth, Quebec. This season on Future Stops, we're exploring the craft of organ building by profiling some of the companies and artisans carrying the tradition into the 21st century. For episode 3 of our Canadian Organ Builders series, we visit the workshop of Org Les Tourneaux. Fernand Les Tourneaux started the company in 1979 by building a six-rank pipe organ in his basement, and from those humble beginnings, the company has built an international reputation for their distinctive sound and artistry. Andrew Forrest is the Vice President and Artistic Director at Les Tourneaux and plays a key role in the balancing act between old world tradition and new world technology. I would say that the, the company, you know, at the beginning, um, in, the 19, in the late 1970s, the 1980s, um, mechanical, self-contained mechanical key action organs were the rage. Um, and to some degree, that still informs what the company does, that we, you know, if it's if a mechanical action organ is practical for the situation, we're delighted to put together a proposal for that. Um, I think in the right situation, uh, it's hard to beat a mechanical action organ. There is a sense of connection with the instrument that you just can't get with an electric action instrument. So I think that's that's one is that the default uh, the default is is to sort of look seriously at mechanical key action and evaluate whether that's a possibility. Uh, if it's not, then, you know, we certainly don't mind moving over to electric key action. Uh, we've built, you know, a great number of instruments with electric slider wind chests. But, um, but I, think, I think the default is, you know, mechanical action, if it's possible. The other thing I would say is casework, is the company has always um, put an emphasis on uh, attractive, solidly built, uh, casework for the instrument. Um, in some cases, you know, the organ chamber can do some of that for you, that the organ chamber serves the same effect as an organ case in terms of mixing sound and blending sounds together before the sound is projected out into the room. Uh, but where the instrument is a freestanding instrument, uh, an organ case is, is pretty crucial. As far as, as far as the voicing of the instrument, um, I would, you know, I, I worked with Fernand long enough to know that, that Fernand was obsessed with, you know, the beauty of sound, that a particular stop has to sound beautiful. But Fernand was also a stickler for um, attacks, that, that when you play a stop, particularly in the bass octaves, that uh, it needs to be responsive. It needs to be feel like it's sort of right under your finger trip. So that as you're as you're playing in the bass octave, um, the pipes are right there with your fingers, and you're not having to wait for, you know, the sound to to sort of slide into place, if you will. And what about the wider organ culture in Quebec? Uh, Quebec has a long history of organ builders. How how does Laterno fit into that uh, ecosystem? Interesting question. I would have to say that Laterno fits into that. Um, with its own sort of sense of, of direction and, and sort of what we think constitutes a good organ and, and sort of adapting or putting forward our proposals on that basis, uh, but also a certain fearlessness in the sense that the company is not afraid to explore new directions. I mean, I think, I think that before we built the instrument in Houston, the, the company's magnum opus, um, it would have been a stretch for people to sort of think, okay, Laterno is building a 22 rank string division, but, um, but we did it. We, we, we went to the Wanamaker organ, we researched and, and I personally measured dozens and dozens of, of string pipes in the Wanamaker string organ, um, to help inform our approach to the Houston organ. Um, so that's, that's one example that, that, um, you know, if if the client has a specific need and the client wants us to do something, um, then then we're certainly keen to try it. And I think that 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 fearlessness 
has served the company well over the years that that we're we're working for our clients and what our clients musical needs are i think that's i think that's an important point with an instrument as complex as the pipe organ serving client needs is a challenging task those needs are translated to workers and crafters like cabinet maker Charles Duchesne Fortin, taking a hands-on approach to every aspect of an instrument's construction. So, this right here is a different section of some piping that we uh, for events, uh, and here there's, uh, there's going to be a letter like this one over there. This is going to be uh, expansion, expansion. Yeah, here, right here. Expansion for if the, the the instrument actually grow a little bit with the moisture and temperature. So this is going to prevent uh, some cracking in the vents or dislodging some uh, some component inside. So this is uh, this was not quite finished, but uh, it's work in progress and. Uh, it's really hard sometimes because you got, especially this one was a tight space and uh, really uh, con narrow and con uh, concise uh, space because I, I, I was, it, it really need to fit in this spot and there's not a lot of room around it. So it's hard to get tight corners. So we got to be inventive sometimes <laughs> or having more, more than one step. So it's a bit more lengthy, but uh, it's worked great. Uh, back then, I know we used to do it in steel instead of a plywood. Uh, plywood got uh, less noise, less vibration, quieter. Uh, I think it's going to be more expensive, but it's a lot better sound, a lot less vibration, and over time, less expansion as well. Because uh, back then, we did plywood, plywood, and. Uh, this is the old, old template. We got plywood and we had otterwood, and now it's fully plywood and it's actually birch plywood. Uh, a lot more layers, a lot more uh, resin, so a lot more stable material, a lot more stronger as well over time. Uh, less chance to crack or failure, so less, uh, less guessing as well over time. So that's, uh, that's, that's how we do it. It's, uh, it's, it seems hard at first uh, when you start, but it's just more. You just need. It's like everything else. You need preparation, planning, and plan ahead. And always be ready of more one vice, spare vice on the side just in case. <laughs> it's always preparation. It's like everything else. You always need to be prepared and ready just in case something go wrong. So. Can you show me the finished one with the yeah. leather? So this one over here. Uh, we see the uh, actual expansion joint here with the letter. Uh, it's overlap one inch, one inch, one inch. Uh, and if I'm correct, this side is up and this side is down. Okay. This one's actually uh, it's the old old one. So we had we had to redo this one. Sometimes we uh, we modified a little bit. Uh, so this one's the the one I'm based it uh, to this one. Uh, and later on. Uh, we can, when we're gonna install, we're gonna redo uh, the holes for different type of uh, uh, air components, uh, optimatics, uh, tremolos, or uh, uh, anti-shocks uh, systems as well. So different type of sy other system that's gonna be graft to the uh, to the vent, or uh, that just go next to the chest to prevent. Uh, shaking okay. uh, in the sound in the air. So usually we work in teams. Usually we got one one guy that's gonna be drawing and fix uh, installing them. So we got one at the uh, installation room. I can show that uh, from the top though, so okay. that, that could be interesting. Uh, and there's one guy that's gonna be cutting and fitting, and there's gonna be another guy that's gonna be gluing and finishing uh, all the uh, installing of the. Uh, little cleats or the uh, letter or new prints. So we usually work with team three or four uh, to be efficient uh, at this point. And you put the whole thing together to test it and then you take it apart yeah. again? To yeah, pretty much. Uh, the, the, the point of we're doing this is uh, to be, uh, do the most of the job uh, on site here uh, at the factory 
and when we are installing the the, the organ, the, the instrument, uh, to do less adjustment as possible. So we pre-adjust all the all the chests for the pressure differential, make sure that the pressure is pretty good. Uh, we tr try to factor uh, where the organ is going to be there. It's going to be more humid, more uh, hotter temperature than what we usually have here in the winter and summer. There's a lot of difference of uh, humidity and temperature in, in the factory, sadly. But we try to factor in uh, the difference, uh, the difference between uh, the one that we have here and where it's going to have a less adjustment uh, over there. So we try to think ahead. Uh, same thing for uh, when we adjust the uh, <coughs> either these or all, all the, uh, the the assembly parts. Uh, we try to adjust them accordingly. Sometimes uh, in in the span of uh, a few weeks, because uh, we try to, to be to build some in advance. Sometimes we have to readjust it a little bit because expanded a bit more than we expected and we readjust it, refit it, make sure that when we put it in the van, everything is fitted, the guy just needs to put his screws in, and voila. The instrument that's on the shop floor during our visit is one of Letourneau's most important, installed at St. Mark's in Dallas, Texas in 2014. In 2019, a tornado ripped through Dallas, blowing the roofs off several buildings at St. Mark's and damaging the great instrument, causing the entire organ to be dismantled and shipped back to Letourneau for restoration. I think the first thing I would say about the, the, the organ for, for St. Mark's School of Texas is that we're just enormously grateful to have the opportunity to rebuild this instrument. There was no, there was no guarantee necessarily that the school would come back to us and, and um, say, would you rebuild our instrument? They chose to come back to us. Uh, and they didn't really talk to anybody else, which is which is a which is an honor. Um, I'm I'm very grateful for that. Um, the other thing that I would say that that sort of ties into the Laterno Company's ethos is that the St. Mark's organ, more than maybe any others, because it's here, it's back in the shop, is we're really able to make significant improvements to it. I mean, we're always about looking for better ways to do things. We're always about uh, making stops better, making scales better, building different, uh, you know, trying new things to for a, for a better and more cohesive musical result. But I think St. Mark's is, is probably the most um, active example of that, 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 you know, here we have this instrument that was completed, I don't know, uh, 2014, 2015. So let's say eight years ago, and now it's back, and now we're able to realize or or put in place a number of um, improvements to what was already a pretty great instrument. I mean, the the the, the St. Mark's organ in its previous uh, iteration won a number of friends for the company. Um, a number of a number of organ builders have have talked to me about it, saying, you know, um, this is a pretty remarkable instrument. What you've achieved here. Um, and so now it's now it's now it's back in the shop, and and we're actively working to make it even better. We're we're building on its strengths, but but addressing some of the you know points that we in our own you know in our own way thought well you know I would like to make that a little bit better. So so for example, um, you know the 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 new instrument, uh, the second version of the St. Mark's organ. Um, the reed stops in the organ will will have just a little bit more punch, a little bit more bite. Uh, the, the the balance between flues and and reeds will tilt a little bit more heavily towards the reed stops, um, and that's 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 the effect that we're after. That that um, the uh, with the particular chapel that they have, with the way that they use the instrument, um, as well as the aesthetic that we we were targeting. That's that's where it needs to go. Um, so, so it's going to be it's going to be pretty exciting to hear it here in the shop. I would expect probably within the next two weeks we'll have it up and playing. Uh, but it'll be even more exciting to hear it when it's finished in the chapel again and, um, and can really sort of hear the difference in that acoustic.
You're listening to the Future Stops podcast, an initiative of the Royal Canadian College of Organists. My name's Blake Hargreaves, and I'm your host as we explore the world of the 21st century organ. We just heard today's feature piece, Fanfare by John Cook, performed by David Heller on Le Tourneau's Opus 107 at Christ Church United Methodist in Louisville, Kentucky. We finish our visit to the Le Tourneau workshop with a look at the assembling room where the work of so many artisans and craftspeople comes together. So this is the assembling room. So that's the top floor. So there's the floor that we were. And we see all the chests and the air chambers and everything uh, partly because we're blocked over there. But we, we see where everything is going to go in and some of the finished products start to form slowly in there so sometimes uh, we just take a look oh see all the guys going like you, you work so hard on your piece and just want to take a look at the finished product uh, the fact that I don't travel as much um, it's 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 hard sometimes to not see your finished product so you, you spend so much time sending it loving it <laughs> Make sure that everything's perfect and not be able to see it installed at the finished location, church or university, whatever. Uh, it's it's hard sometimes, but we uh, not too long ago we had the pleasure to actually have one fully finish. We actually played uh, a piece, a few piece, uh, back uh, about a year ago, and that was actually lovely because we actually I was able to actually hear instrument that we built and, and spend so much time working on it <laughs> so this is the place where you get the most satisfaction yeah is when you see like yeah that, that's always look like yeah I, I did my job properly uh, I did uh, everything off it everything's fitting right and see all, all all the nice grain on all the parts nicely Nicely done, and we can be we wearable to actually see. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's one 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 of the probably enjoy you know just to see a finished product you know, or close to finish you know, as possible. So it's 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 fun to just come here and take a sec. You know, that that's where they are. Cool. Yeah. But that that's all. That that's mostly me. I mean, the guys do. You know. It's always fun to to see the progress. You know. Helps you <laughs> cope with all the. Blisters, because <laughs> there's a few hours of sanding in there. I think I think this organ, particularly just the front portion, we had more than four or five weeks with a few guys on it, just sanding and making making sure it's perfect. Because with all the molding, it's, it doesn't seem to be that bad, but we, but there's molding all over. We, there's uh, there's a little uh, there's uh, well add parts that's going to be real at the top of the organ there's a lot of time there because every angle need to be perfect because we try to send it really in the sense of the grain and there's no cross cross sending as, even on the top of the organ where it's we make sure everything's perfect as well because because even though no one's going to see it even well yes and no because sometimes like it come in parts and when we, we deliver at the church or the venue uh, some some guys are gonna go around and look at it, and, and if they're gonna see defects, they don't know where this part's gonna go at first. Uh, so we want to make sure that everything's perf- perfect, even though it's on the ground. For now, it's gonna go high up, a few twenty something feet in the air. Uh, we need to be everything's perfect as well, because that's their standard over here. We we, we try to push the brand. We we try to be the best as much as we can. So we try to make everything perfect as well. Uh, even the inside of the organ, uh, every corner is going to be a round up order sand it just to make sure that uh, nobody's gonna gonna get caught in the chest as well. We try to think as if I'm gonna go maintenance and uh, we're gonna get nits and scratches and cuts uh, over here. Okay, so make sure that everything's sand down or cut corners before we glue or install the piece. So that's gonna be pleasant to work on it later on in the year. While across North America and Europe we hear so many stories of organs being decommissioned and given or thrown away, 
It's encouraging to learn that there are multiple pipe organ factories employing lots of people full-time building new instruments and restoring old ones. The craft continues to evolve. Andrew Forrest showed me many small but meaningful innovations the company is undertaking to continually improve these instruments' expressive capabilities and how they reflect the sound of our world today. Canada may be relatively new to the practice of organ building, but it's incredibly impressive that we've been able to feature three different organ manufacturers this year who are very active and represent only a part of this culture in Canada. We'd like to thank the team at Org Les Tourneaux for inviting us into their workshop. We'd like to invite you to enter our world by joining us on social media at Future Stops and Future Stops Podcast, where you can explore photos and videos of Les Tourneaux's incredible space and bring your voice to the conversation. Future Stops is a podcast from the Royal Canadian College of Organists produced by Andrew O'Connor with Sanjay Parker as community manager and executive producer Elizabeth Shannon. I'm your host, Blake Hargreaves.